Dreyfus. Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the Venerable Mong Liaoming, homage to Master Sakya Kong, the Zhong Rinpoche, homage to the 16 Karmapa, the Dharma King, and homage to Master Dubden Darji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar, all the deities of the altar, and homage to the three jewels, and homage to the main deity of Homa, Namuraga Raja. So, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, temple directors, and all disciples here and over the internet, and our participating VIPs today are uh, the wife of Taiwan's representative to Sweden, Dhamma Sister Judy. The law advisor to True Buddha School, Dharma Sister Jennifer Zhou. CTI TV Taiwan, producer for the Genie Tian Sang Sinton, Dharma Sister Rebecca Shiachi. Representative to the council person of Taipei City, Ms. Chi Huiling. From Fuxing Airline, Dharma Sister Wu Meixian. Voices of Heaven Choir Group, Ms. Lin Yizhan. It's noted here the pronunciation is Ms. Lin Yizhan. There's a slight inflection on the pronunciation. And Dr. Ryan Zhuang. Uh, next Sunday, there is no Homa because we are going to New York. Today, we perform a Ragaraja Homa, and in the past, I have taught about this Dharma, and initially, it was transmitted in Hong Kong, and I remember, at that time, they used many special things for the ceremony, including the modern music, like uh, guitars and uh, Western drums, and reciting this mantra. <laughs> While playing on the guitar, reciting the mantra, Hom Tzatzi Hom Re. This mantra is the shortest, and the visualization is rather complicated. The visualization is rather complicated. And the mudra, it's the touching mudra. Uh, two hands interlace inwardly and the two middle fingers upright and touching at the middle part. So by touching, it means that uh, both sides are touched by love. 
So it's the same. You and the Buddhas are touching each other. That's also. That's also catching up in love. So that's the major, medium, and the minor love connection. So, like the big love connection is like fans. Fans in Chinese, it's fansi, translated from English, fans. So as a singer or as a president, you need lots of fans. So it's this, this mudra. So this hand, this is this kind of mudra, there are lots of mudras. Cross, that's Lagaraja. Separate is Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. This is Vajra teeth. And when it's straight, so two fingers are very straight, that would be for Vajra Kilaya, Dorje Bhupa. And if it's slightly arched, that would be for Yamantaka, which is Manjushri's Yamantaka. So just with this middle fingers, Siddhigarbha, Ragaraja, Rajakilaya, and Yamantaka, Manjushri. They all with this mudra. They are all in it. So the visualization of Ragaraja is divided into three steps. The first one is the nectar vase. So his dharma throne started from the bottom, the nectar vase, and the nectar vase belongs to Amitabha. So you use the sit syllable sit. First, you visualize the sit syllable shit that transform to become the nectar vase. And from inside the vase, a red lotus blossom arises, very red lotus. And the lotus is represented by ban. So shorter at the top, longer at the bottom, and slightly curved. And with a circle on top, that's called bang, bang. Then you visualize the syllable, and then the lo red lotus. First, the nectar vase, and then appears the red lotus, but represented by the sit syllable. The shit transformed to become the nectar vase, and bang transformed to become the red lotus, and then the Ragaraja himself. And he is home from the Om Ah Hom. So he's transformed from home, sit syllable. And Ragaraja has six arms, as we all know. The first pair of arms are holding a mala and lotus. And the second pair of hands are holding bow and arrow. And the third pairs are holding vajra bell and vajra scepter. And entire body radiates a bright red light, and he sits on a thousand petal lotus on a nectar vase. So three sit syllables. First, you visualize the appearance of the she sit syllable that transformed to become the nectar vase. Then you visualize the appearance of the pang sit syllable that transformed to become the lotus blossom. And then you visualize the appearance of the sit syllable home that transforms to become ragaraja. So the ragaraja dharma practice has been transmitted in Hong Kong. And 
The presiding master at that time was Master Lian Teng, who now has gone to the Mahadapa Lotus Ponds to the Buddha land. And his Buddha name is also called the Lotus Light Buddha, the same name, the Lotus Light Buddha. He was the presiding master, and I was sitting behind him. He had a habit of writing his speech, and he continued reading his uh, speech. And he was talking <laughs> to almost dinner time. <laughs> and I was sitting behind him, and I was going to transmit this dharma. But he continued until about the end time of the ceremony, only a few minutes left. So Master Lian Miao was getting to be panicky, and it's only a few minutes left. So he asked Master Lian Teng to stop. But Master Lian Teng said, but I haven't finished reading my speech. How could I s stop? I, he didn't know how to put on the brake, like driving a car. He hasn't arrived at the destination. How could he put on the brake and stop? So he continued talking. So that was his uh, Master Lian Teng's characteristic. So Master Lian Miao walked to him and said, time is up. It should finish soon. <laughs> and Master Lian Teng replied, I don't know how to stop. He didn't know how to wrap up his speech. And he was still in the middle of it. He had to finish reading his speech. And then for the third time, <laughs> Master Lian Miao went up uh, to him and said, there's no more time left. It's time, almost time for dinner. If you don't finish, and he was dumbfounded, and uh, what should he do? <laughs> and he continued reading. There was a story about Master Lian Teng. So when he finally finished, I only have 20 minutes left. So in 20 minutes, I uh, transmitted all the Dharma, including the Dharma of painting the image, or uh, stopping the evil, drawing an image, uh, for love and respect, the nectar dharma, the curved image dharma, exercising, exorcising the demons. So all this dharma, I completed them all in 20 minutes. Like the dharma of painting the image. You paint the nectar vase, the lotus, Nagaraja. And then by painting, you imprint it on your mind. It's e if that would be fastest to learn to visualize by painting it. So that's the dharma of a drawing or painting the image. And the dharma of stopping the, de the evil is you use the bow and arrow. Uh, it's a very sharp arrow that uh, the finest red thread that was about to break, then you cut it off, then your connection is gone. So if you have a bad connection or bad affinity, negative affinity, then you can cut it off. But uh, you cannot uh, kill two people. You cannot shoot two people. Then you like kill them. Like the sound of SARS in Chinese, it sounds like kill 
And AIDS, it sounds like love to death. That's the Dharma for stopping the evil. And the Dharma of love and respect. You need the pistils of a red lotus blossoms. You pronounce it Ray. Uh, the the <laughs> the be Beijing Beijing accent would be would be rolling tongue ray. So you need a hundred and eight pistils or stamens of the red lotus blossoms, and then you throw them into the Homa fire. And you recite the mantra, Hom Zha Zha Hom Re, commanding this person and that person to love and respect each other. So when you perform Homa, there is also the Dharma for love and respect. So if the arrow becomes a sharp arrow, then it is for stopping the evil or cutting off the evil. But if the arrow becomes like a flower arrow, then it would become a love and respect. So that's the difference. So you visualize the tall, handsome, and rich boyfriend in front of you, and you use a flower arrow to shoot at his heart. And if you hit the target, then he would uh, be with you. The boyfriend would be with you. You need to visualize. This is all the Dharma for love and respect. But if a man really likes a woman, you visualize the woman in front of you, and you become Ragaraja, and you shoot the flower arrow toward her heart. Then you would live inside her heart. Then you fill her heart, and she will always love you. That's the Dharma for love and respect. And the nectar Dharma and the lotus blossom was transformed from the seed syllable Pang. And the nectar Dharma is to eradicate your karma. You visualize the red ambrosia or red nectar water because Ragaraja is red. Because Ragaraja emits nectar, he transforms himself to be the whole body nectar and enters into your body, and your body is filled with nectar. Then this can purify yourself and eradicate all the negative, the bad karma from yourself. And the Dharma of carving an image, you carve Ragaraja on a small thing and then you carry carry it and you reset the mantra frequently then your boss would uh, like you would love you that he would think of you when he's giving promotions or uh, relocating to a better job so if you wear or carry the calf image with you. After completing 300,000 mantra recitations, then you would have uh, responses. And also the Dharma of detoxification, for, of detox, detoxification. Like if you take food or alcohol or food that's not fresh, spoiled food, 
if you didn't know or you know that it is spoiled, but and then you recite home cha cha home re, then the food would be cleansed. So this is the dharma of detoxification. It's very interesting this detox dharma. Many people use this Ragaraja's detox dharma. Let me discuss this. So Sakyamuni Buddha took a poisonous food and he had diarrhea and dehydrated and his digestive system became a disorder, was in disorder. And in Mahayana Buddhism, it was said that he took in poisonous uh, mushrooms and at the end, uh, someone made offering of food to the guru. Uh, there was an iron smith who made offering to Sakyamuni Buddha. So he went to the iron smith's house and offered uh, the toxic or poisonous mushrooms to the Buddha. So he was poisoned, had diarrhea, and dehydrated. And he was close to the Ganges River, and he asked Ananda to get some water. But at that time, the 500 tradesmen passed by the river, so the water was very turbid, it was very uh, turbid and could not be drunk. So in Tantrayana, the legend was different. Sakyamuni Buddha took in the spoiled uh, or rotten, rotten meat. So this is according to the tantra, tantric tradition, because eating meat is allowed in Tantrayana. So they say that uh, the Buddha ate meat, but in Mahayana Buddhism, they are vegetarians, so they said that the Sakyamuni Buddha took in mushroom. So this is very interesting. So what did Sakyamuni Buddha eat to get poisoned? So, but the legends were like that. One said eating poisonous uh, mushrooms, the other one is eating rotten meat. So what did he actually eat? before he died. Many disciples made offerings of food to the Buddha, and the disciples didn't say anything. But uh, the words through the grape wine, finally, the Mahayana believers believe uh, he took in mushrooms, and the tantric followers believe he took in rotten meat. So you recite home cha cha hom re and touch the food and when you eat it it doesn't have any more poison in it. So my dharma of detoxification, dharma of carving the image, dharma of nectar, dharma of love and respect, dharma of drawing an image, dharma of stopping the evil. See, I've, I completed all this dharma transmission. Once you attain spiritual union, you have the yogic response, then you can do all this dharma. But Master Lian Teng continued talking and talking and talking, and he could not stop. He had to finish his uh, written speech. And it was no use. Master Lian Miao was urging him to stop. Please, finish, please. And he still couldn't stop. And he only gave me 20 minutes uh, to talk about it. And now I finish transmitting all the Dharma. So in order to gain yogic response with the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Raga Raja is the mediator. 
I saw someone wearing a kimono and she's really um, Japanese kimono are you Japanese? <laughs> she has a Japanese name. You got it. <laughs> it sounded like uh, wearing pants. Her Japanese name, she's uh, Japanese. She's Joanna's niece. She lives in Japan and now she's studying in the United States. So she grew up in Japan. So your Japanese is good. So a reporter would ask like this, so you live in Japan ever since you are young, so is your Japanese good? Then they would hit on you because you grew up in Japan, of course your Japanese would be good. It's like asking a kid growing up in America, is your English good? So there are a lot of nonsense questions asked by reporters like, Oh, Grandmaster Lu, you've written so many books, over 250 books. So did you write the book one character at a time? And I said, what? What? It's really <laughs> nonsense. Now I'm writing book number 255. And they asked me, did you write it uh, character by character? Or did you write it book by book? <laughs> what are you talking about? So you think that I would write several books at the same time? And they need they need to ask this kind of questions. They didn't even think about it. Today, we will continue on these two people who went to India to study. One is called Zomi uh, Sakyayesu and Dano Sinlu Junzu. They were sent to study in, in India, to study tan Tantric Dharma in India. Prior to their departure, Kampu and Acharya spoke a very a statement famous in Tibetan Buddhism. That is, precepts or sila is the root of the holy teaching. So Buddhism at that time was called the holy teaching. The most important thing is the precepts. You need to keep the precepts. That the precepts are the root of the holy teaching. So you need to put great importance on precepts. And the school that places the greatest importance on precepts is Galukpa the yellow sect. And at that time, the red sect, Ningma Pa, uh, was rather slack on the precepts. So Ningma Pa, Sakya Pa, Kagyu Pa. So Ningma Pa don't place great importance, but Galuk Pa places great, greatest importance on precepts. So the famous statement in Tibetan Buddhism is that precepts is the root of the holy teaching. Without precepts, let's not talk about Buddhism. 
and prajna is the pith instruction of the holy teaching. The Buddha's wisdom so the meanings of the Buddha is the pith instruction of the holy teaching and Tantra or Tantric Dharma is the queen essence of the holy teaching so the elucidation of the body speech and mind so the Tantric Dharma practice that uses the body, speech, and mind is the queen essence of the holy teaching. Because Buddha has spoken on a lot of the sutras, on many sutras. You can't even finish the Tripitaka. So the Tripitaka compiled by the Emperor Qianlong is called Long Zhang, Long Zhang, and then the Da Zheng Zhang. And the Xixia, the Jing Zhang, which is the baskets of sutras of Xixia dynasty, written in Xixia language, and also Tibetan Tripitaka. So in Tibetan language, there is also a Tripitaka written in Tibetan language. There are so many sutras, but the most important queen essence is the Tantric Dharma and how to practice it. So when you go to India, you need to keep this in mind, to listen to them and absorb them and bring them back to the bed and spread it in the bed. That's the key point. Then these two people left for India. So this statement is very important. So this includes the sutras, precepts or sila, and the sastras, or the discussion, or treatises. So the sila is precepts, the sutras are the words spoken by the Buddha or by the sages. And the precepts are the precepts or sila, the rules, and lun or the sastras or the discussions or treatises are the, the uh, insights or the inspirations of spiritual cultivators. So they should uh, bring back the sila, the sutras, and the sastras from India. So they left for India. However, due to their differences in personality and point of view, Dano Shinlu Chun Tzu preferred to make pilgrimages. So he went to the eight uh, holy places in India and he collected merits and good fortunes and eventually stayed at under the Vajra seat. The Vajra seat is the place where Buddha Sakyamuni meditated at Bodhigaya. So he lived nearby and he didn't have much or special attainment in terms of his Buddhist studies. Like I personally went to India, I met, oh, no, this person went to India, made pilgrimages to the Eight Holy Places and collecting merits and eventually uh, went to the Vajra seat in Bodhigaya and stayed uh, nearby and then nobody heard about him afterwards. So two people went to India to study Buddha Dharma. But he just liberated himself. He didn't care about the rest. He didn't bring back Buddha Dharma to Tibet. However, Chok, um, um, and go to prostitute or you 
do bad things and you created bad karma, so you don't abide by the precepts. How can you have attainments in Buddha Dharma? There's no need to, to talk about it. Sometimes somebody said, you believe in Jesus Christ, that's good too. So from Monday to Saturday, like you steal, you rob, and on Sundays you repent. And after the repentance, from Monday to Saturday, you steal and rob again. And then on Sunday, you go to the church to repent again. Of course, that's no use. So it's the same in Buddhism. You need to abide by the five basic precepts, and you can't even keep them. There's no need to talk more about the precepts. There's no precepts to be talked about, and you will not have attainments in Buddha Dharma. So he studied precepts for eight years. So he was very serious about his study. So he also studied prajna, which me means studied sutras and precepts. And afterwards, uh, Zomi went to East India, where he met a monk, an ordained person who used an invisible hand to accept an offering of food. That was incredible. He saw a monk, and the monk was uh, begging for alms, and people giving him s some something, and he didn't even extend his ha arm, and the food would automatically move to the bowl. So that's an invisible hand. So he used an invisible hand to accept offerings from other people. Like you're making an offering to me, and the offering would automatically move to my hand. So that monk must have some a supernatural or transcendental power in order to be able to do that. So that's called the invisible hand to accept the offering of food. And he was awestruck and found this monk to be incredible. So Zuo Mi Yi Si, so the master translator Zuo Mi, in ancient circumambulated the monk for three circles. In ancient time, that showed uh, the greatest um, admiration or respect. So when you were beseeching the Buddha to transmit Buddha Dharma or to ask for Dharma, they would circumambulate Buddha Sakyamuni three times and then prostrated and bowed, and then asked Sakyamuni Buddha. It's the same. So he circumambulated the monk and bowed many times, and pleading to be accepted as his disciple. So he asked the monk to be his guru. So because he could show such uh, supernatural power, so he must have some spiritual cultivation. And this monk turned out to be the a third generation disciple of Virupa. So the first lineage is Virupa to that person, and then to the next person. And the second person transmitted to the third person. That would be this. 
and his name is Prachnendraruki. So the third generation disciple of Virupa is called the Prachnendraruki. So he accepted Zhuomi as his disciple. And he started teaching Tantric Dharma to Zhuomi, the master translator, including Landre. So Zhuomi followed the monk for four years. And afterwards, he received all the lineage transmission, which was Lamdre. That was the master translator, Zuomi. Later on, the master translator, Zuomi, returned to Tibet and stayed at Lamu. See? At noon, I was talking about Lamu. There was a Rinpoche that followed Grandmaster, and he was called Om Chak Rinpoche. He often visited Seattle Lizang Temple. And I was talking about Lamu. He went back to Lamu. Uh, a place called Liu Gu Lo, uh, near Sakya. He also invited Pandita Jayatolo to teach all kinds of Dharma for five years with an offering of 500 liangs of gold. How much is it? 500 liangs of gold is equal to how many kilos? To 25 kilograms. If one kilogram is over 40,000 US dollars, now one kilogram of gold is about 40,000 US dollars. Actually, it's over 40,000. So he made an offering of 1 million US dollars and learned for five years, learned the Tantric Dharma for five years. So the master translator Zuomi learned a lot of Dharma. So now you understand. One million US dollars for listening to Dharma for five years. One million US dollars. One million US dollars. Five hundred liangs of gold, but now, wow, one million US dollars. Grandmaster has five million disciples, and you have listened to Dharma for so many years. So, if you make an offering, if one per each person makes an offering of one million US dollars, how much would Grandmaster have? But I don't dare to say that because for each blessing on the head, they only offer one US dollar. But of course, not everybody. There are also some who offered 10, 20, 50, or 100 dollars, or even more. But most, one, most people offer one dollars or five dollars. But that's not bad. I'm content. That's good enough. I live my days happily. 
So in one shot, he made an offering of 500 liangs of gold. Wow. It's amazing. That's hundred, a million US dollars. So he was there for five years and learned a lot of Dharma. So the master translated Zuo Mi was really well versed in Sanskrit. And he mastered exoteric and esoteric sutras and tantras. And he translated a great number of sutras. And the most important one is the Hevajra Tantra. And Grandmaster wrote the Hevajra Exposition or the Great Bliss Within the Empty Nature. And I have written that book. And how much is the book sold for in US dollars? About $15. That's very cheap. Hevajra. Hevajra exposition is embodies the queen essence of Hevajra. If you attain fruition in Hevajra practice, then you have comprehended Lamdre about two third, about two third of Lamdre. There are many, many points about Lamdre that are also in Hevajra exposition. So I have written a book on Hevajra. And I have also talked a lot about Kala Chakra. So I place great importance on two Heruka practices. One is Hevajra of the Sakya school and Kala Chakra, which I have transmitted quite a bit. The teacher asked Xiaoming why the cars and the people are always uh, by the right, on the right side. But in England, it's to the left. And Xiaoming replied, because of the Bodhisattva's protection. And protection in Chinese also sound like uh, protecting the right. So in Taiwan or America, we drive on the right side. But in England, they ride on the left side. And Japan is the same. Japan followed uh, the English tradition and also Hong Kong. And uh, Great Britain protect, protect Liat, they also followed. Uh, so you need to be on the right because the Bodhisattva is protecting the right. About you is protecting. So you go to the left and you go to the right at different countries. So why don't we have a standard all over the world? Then you don't need to make cars with steering wheels on the left or on the right. And in, in Taiwanese, that's the curse words, you know. Do you understand? Only Taiwanese would understand them. <laughs> you re if you rely on the mountain, the mountain topples. If you rely on the person, the person runs away. And then, in Chinese, it rhymes. And then, what else do you rely on? It's best to rely on yourself. Actually, in spiritual cultivation, we rely completely on our own. You cannot rely on other people. So after you learn 
something, then you rely on yourself to put it into practice. Only then you would have attainments or CD. Yesterday, after dinner, the wife was going to have another bowl of rice, but yet she's concerned about gaining weight, so she was hesitating. So with my statement, I let her open the rice bowl cover, and she did uh, have another bowl of rice. Because I said, you're already an elephant. Does it matter whether you're fat elephant or skinny elephant? So that's why I recommend Master Hui Jun. You're already a round ball. Do you care whether the ball is full of air or, or doesn't have enough air? She walks about two hours every day and from far away as if I see her a ball rolling, rolling in. She was holding an umbrella because it was raining and she was walking uh, inside the Seattle temple and she said that she needed to walk two hours. And from far away, I saw her do, to be like a ball, rolling from here to there and here to there. And last night at dinner, I saw her finish eating in a very short time. But you're already a ball. Does it matter? whether the air inside the ball is full or not, you're still a ball. However, in our Buddhist study, we need to be really full. You need to learn it perfectly. You need to comprehend the precepts. You need to understand prajna and you need to put into practice the Tantric Dharma. And Tantric Dharma is the essence of Buddha Dharma. In Tibet, Tantric Dharma is the queen essence of the Buddha Dharma. But you need to have prajna, the Buddha's wisdom, and you need to know how to abide by the precepts, and only then it would be perfect. One day, the emperor was sick. So he called upon all his ministers, and the, one of the ministers asked, uh, who would you appoint your successor? And because the emperor was sick, so he said, uh, call, call the doctor. So the word, the Chinese word chuan is like, calling or appointing the successor. So the ministers were really stupid. How could they do that? You know, I look into this Western Xia dynasty, and there were lots of chaos and battles during that dynasty. Among many of the kings were like this. So they appointed uh, the wrong successors. So often, it's often like that. If you appoint the wrong person, then it would be a big mistake. In the past, it was very strict for the teacher to transmit the lineage to the disciple, they need to observe for three years. And the disciple also ne needs to observe the guru for three years. And only then uh, the refuge would be bestowed. 
for three years, the Guru told the disciple, another three years for the disciple to the Guru, and altogether six years already. So what lineage transmission could there be? The time is gone. But nowadays it's different because we have media, uh, we have the internet, and we have webcasts. So Dharma transmission is different now. Now it's open and public. But in the past, the Tantric Dharma is only transmitted within the royal family. So the inner quarters of the palace, or the king, or several of the ministers, it was not transmitted uh, to the common people. But now it's different, now it's public and open for everyone. And now we have a direct webcast, and we have internet. Doesn't matter where you live, you can hear the Tantric Dharma. So this is a good sign, but something, but with a little uh, shortcoming is that it could be transmitted to the wrong people. It's like the joke that the emperor said, uh, call call on call the doctor so the successor the doctor became the successor and most people should know this joke at class the teacher said so anyone that has pets at home please raise your hand and John raised his hand and said what pet do you have at home and he replied, I have many pets. My granddad has a dog, my grandma has a cat, my mom has a squirrel, and I have a, a rabbit. But those are no big deal. But my dad's pet is the, the most incredible because I heard my mom said that my dad has a fox spirit outside. And I have never met, I have, have never seen the pet. And when my dad uh, was talking on the phone, I always heard my dad said that there's a female tiger <laughs> at home. So I asked granddad, so where is the female tiger? I've never seen her. And granddad said, there's not only one female tiger, actually there are two. There are more than one female tigers at home, and female tigers referring to the fierce woman. And thank you very much to His Holiness' precious Dharma teaching. 